Hello I'm Karen and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make these lovely mittens okay um, I've left this one off so you can see what it looks like off because my daughter says it looks like an oven mitt but as you can see when it's on it fits beautifully and if you hold it this way you can see when you actually curve your fingers together you don't get a baggy bit there so it's nice for you to actually hold things such as an umbrella if you go out in the ring okay so um, these are made from the corner to corner crochet pattern and because of that I'm going to actually share with you just a little sample of how to do the corner to corner um, crochet pattern first um, just because I know some people don't know how to do it so if you do already know how to do it this is going to take me about five or ten minutes and then you can actually go to the actual rest of the pattern I'm using this um, I don't know, sort of a, like a tan kind of colour because it looks kind of nice with the actual black. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to begin, I'm beginning with a twist. You can begin with a slip stitch if you prefer, or a slip knot. And we need to make a chain of six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And a top tip for this one, because you can see I've put my thumb on the third stitch up. So the third stitch up is actually the fourth stitch down because in the pattern I put you need to work into the fourth stitch but just a top tip there but we're using um, the treble crochet if you're in the UK or the double crochet if you're in the US so you yarn over go underneath one loop yarn over pull through yarn, yarn over pull through two and pull through two and that's your stitch okay and so we do one in that stitch there into the next chain and into the next chain there and you will make a little shape that looks like that okay and now we're going to go up a row so we're going to chain six that's one two three put my thumb there four five six and then when I yarn over, I can work straight into that stitch there. So we're going to just do the same as we did before and work um, one of the stitches into each of the chains. Okay, so that's two and underneath one strand and that makes three. Now when you've got these two bits that look like this, you need to get this one and turn it so the, the opposite way, a bit like signposts. You know, one's going one way, one's going the opposite way. And then we're going to, into the chain three space, we're going to go into there, yarn over and slip stitch together. So they sit together like that. Now we're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. And we're going to do three double crochet or three treble crochet into this chain three space. So that's one, two, oops, and three. Okay, and so each of these little bits that I'm making, they're called blocks. Okay, so now we've got three blocks, they look like a little booty, don't they like that? <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to do another block up, so we're going to do one, two, three, put my thumb there, four, five, six, yarn over into that loop, so it's the fourth stitch down, which is the third stitch up, or the third chain up, should I say, that's one, <laughs> two and three. Oh, I need to pull some more yarn I can't do it there we go and the third stitch there now well, because we've gone up a row again we need to do the same thing so we turn over and then into the last into that chain three space there we're going to slip stitch together to make it like that so we've got three across and two up and I'm going to fill in this block by chaining three two three and working three stitches into the chain three space that's one two and three okay oops i'm just going to just get some more yarn there and then slip stitch into this one now for this sample because you can see we've got three across and we're still we're going to go two up so we're going to make another um, block here so we end up with so it's three blocks by three blocks that's 
one, two, and three. Okay? And I'm going to go one more time just to show you how to go up and then I'm going to show you how to actually close it all up. But I'm going to make it into a rectangle, not a square. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, three. Put my thumb on the third stitch up. Chain up, sorry. One, two, three. And then underneath that one stitch there, that loop, oh my goodness. I haven't made a video for so long, <laughs> it's like I'm out of practice, so please forgive me. And the reason why I haven't made a video for so long is because um, I had to go out and get a proper job, as my dad called it. But now, um, like everybody else, we're all working from home. So um, there we go. Okay, so well, now I've got four stitches, four blocks across and three up. So I'm going to do... The chain of three and then work one and this this pattern um I was inspired to make it by a colleague that I actually started to work with um her name is Becky so hello Becky <laughs> hello everybody else in the office that's not in the office that's now stuck at home <laughs> um okay and I'm going to do another chain of three and one, two, and three. Yeah, my friend Becky, she actually learned how to do the corner to corner as a beginner's pattern. And she just learned how to just to make blankets. So I just thought I would share how to make something different out of corner to corner. So now I've got three blocks up and four across. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start filling in this area here. So we don't need to go up anymore. So we need to make a chain of three. That turn the work and then into the chain three space and slip stitch and then make chain of three one two three and then make the three treble crochet in the UK or three double crochet if you're in the US there and then we're going to slip stitch into this one just get myself some more yarn that's one, two, three, and work three stitches. One, two, and three. And then we're going to slip stitch into the chain three space. We're not building up anymore, so we do one, two, three, turn the work, slip stitch into the chain three space. And we've got one block left to do, so we're going to one, two, three chains, three stitches, that's one, two, and three. And then we're going to slip stitch into the chain three space, and to finish it off we go one, two, three, turn, and slip stitch into the corner. So when you've finished your work, you'll have a tail end that you've begun with at this side and the actual finish over this side. And note at this moment, if I just put it down, it looks a little bit wonky, but if you just stretch at it a little bit, it does actually go more um, into the actual rectangle shape that we need. Okay, so that's the basics of how to actually make that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just move that out of the way and show you a piece that I worked on earlier. Um, and so this one is just to be able to make a mitten but this one is slightly different to the one I just showed you this was my prototype that I did in the very beginning um, and that's just all in one colour but this one here um, this one is done in two colours and that's what I'm going to do with the blue one so I'm going to show you how to do that okay and this one, what you need to do is you need to make your rectangle, which is 10 blocks. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blocks across and 12 blocks tall. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so that's my tail end where I started. And this is the very last um, block that I was making. I'm going to slip stitch into there, make my chain of three. So it's 1, 2, three turn my work and slip stitch into that last chain 
three okay so that's where I'm finishing so when I finish like that my tail end is over here you will see if you when you've done yours as well that all the way down one side <clears throat> you can see you've got lots of little chain threes you can see that and across the top as well we can also see that we've got little chain threes and then down one side you'll have where there's no chain three and then there'll be a chain of three and none and the same across the bottom okay now what we need to do is we need to have our work so it's this way around and then we're going to fold it okay so that we're doing it that way around <clears throat> and what we're going to do is into this chain three space there we're going to slip stitch together so remember that this has got our chain threes around this edge here and now we're going to do a chain of three one two oops daisy three and then you look at your blocks and in between the two blocks you're going to put your hook through those two and then look at the ones at the back so don't slip stitch accidentally between the posts you want to go in between the blocks and you're going to slip stitch there okay so we've done our first chain of three there so that's one block joined I'm sorry oh, oh look at that <laughs> I prepared everything but I didn't expect to not oh okay we're okay we're good to go right so I've joined I've gone to one block so now we need to go one two three and then in between the next block and the next block so they've got to match up at the front and the back so that's two oh, oh that didn't work very well did it go back in Karen and slip stitch there and then one ooh. <laughs> two three i'm sorry it's because i haven't made a video for ages and well i did i actually made these videos while i was actually um at work one two three well not literally while i was at work but um while i was actually working in the office and i said oh and i'm working in an office and this that and the other and then i was like oh, i can't release those videos because people will say you're not supposed to be working in an office right now <laughs> um but anyway so you join four of the blocks so you've got four joined together now we're going to go one two three and we're making the thumb hole so we're not going to go through the front those are the ones that's got the chain three on it but we're going to go between the two blocks at the back and make a chain three over the top of those ones there and then do the same again one two three but this time we're going to go through the front and through the back so through the front through the matching one at the back and this will leave you your thumb hole just there which has actually got chains of three all the way around it ready for you to build on to build your thumb one two three and now what we're going to do is we're going to work to the end <clears throat> okay so we've got to match up all of these blocks all the way to the end there one two three and in between the blocks here and the block there as you're working it does look like it's wonky but it does match up as you get there one two three between the next blocks there and there one two three between that block there and that block there just get myself some more yarn hope there's no more oh there is look at that tangled up yarn in the middle of my ball so this video is not oh <laughs> uh, see the trials and tribulations of a crocheter dum, dum, dum. <laughs> one two three and into there between these blocks and that one the matching at the back now when we get to the end one two three we want to go through the chain three chain three loop at the front and if you can see where you did that knot for the tail end at the beginning that's where you're going to slip stitch into there okay so that's all joined up now we're going to make the rounded end and the easiest way to do this is literally you go straight in between the block and we're going to slip stitch. I know it's going to leave what is quite a big stitch really, but don't worry about it. Okay, and so if you just sort of scrunch up your work, 
and go in between the next block and slip stitch. I'm going to do that all the way around until we get all the way back to, we know where the beginning is because we've got that tail end. Okay, and into these ones. I was actually making these on my um, commute into work um, each day so that I was making them in secret to hide them from my friend so she never ever knew what I was making and I never actually got to show her in person because um, I ended up having to work from home. So now we've got to this end piece here. The last block finishes just underneath where this chain, these chain threes are so it's easier to just to go under the chain threes and slip stitch there and then come across your work put that tail end over there and the your tail end is sort of come around there we're going to skip this first one and work into the next one we're just going to slip stitch again okay so skip one and slip stitch doesn't matter if you're not in the same particular place as long as you're doing skip one slip stitch underneath two strands and then um, skip one, slip stitch, and it's getting tinier to work in. Look, skip one, but to slip stitch under there, and then we're skipping one, and we're back to the beginning piece there where my tail end is. Okay, and at this point, I need my scissors. So let's get my yarn there. Get the scissors, cut that off, pull this tail end through, okay. And so, on this one here, um, we need to get our darning needle just to be able to just close up because we've still got, and you can see, we've still got a tiny hole left behind. <clears throat> so, if you just come and weave in and out of these stitches, there. We're just going to go in and out of those stitches there and back to the beginning point like that now we can pull that tight and then we can use the other tail end literally to do a knot and i'm going to do one of those knots where you, you've gone through twice and then pull that so that's nice and secure and then whoo, it's gonna wobbly <laughs> and then do the same again do it twice because we don't really want it to come undone okay and then do that so it's all nice and tight you can actually if you want to go to the extent of sewing in the ends but for the sake of the video and for quickness you don't have to it's not important okay so that's what it's going to look like <clears throat> while it's like this so I'm just going to just slip it on just to show you um, so there's my thumb hole and this is obviously it's inside out we've got our tail end showing yeah, and so it comes to this point here and you've got my thumb around my thumb hole there okay so while it's still inside out this is where we want to put the cuff on it okay so we get our different colored yarn you see now i've got my dark background because i'm using white and then what we're going to do is where we where we've got our join and where they've got those chain three joins we're just going to put the hook um on yeah the hook through there Pull it through and make a chain of three. One, two, three. Okay, and now in these chain three loops, we're going to work three um, of the treble crochet if you're in the UK or double crochet if you're in the US. We're going to work this all the way around in every single one and just make these three <coughs> stitches. Okay we're just going to go all the way around I'm not going to build the whole cuff all I'm going to do is just do you two rows just so that you can see what happens and then um, show you where to join on for the thumb okay because otherwise my video will be far too long because I'm already on 20 minutes and I don't like to make really 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 long videos because I get concerned that if I make a mistake and have to redo these videos, I, I start to lose my battery power or my camera will overheat or something weird will happen. So um, I'm trying to avoid all of those catastrophes happening. 
okay um <clears throat> but yes um i decided to say i made these videos um I, I made i've made a set of things out of corner to corner um crochet so i thought that i would share them and then um i wasn't I wasn't happy that the videos actually said about me being in the office because like i said earlier people say you shouldn't be in the office right now you shouldn't be doing this and i didn't want to cause mayhem because I'm not making a video for ages and then releasing one that people would have um, negative things to say. I mean, well, there's always somebody who's got something negative to say, but um, we try and avoid that as much as possible. Okay, so I'm nearly back round to the beginning. One, two, three. And this is where you'll see that this chain three that you did in the beginning is actually quite important. Okay, so that's one, two, and three. And then what we're going to do is just move that tail end out of my way. Is where that you did this chain three, we're going to slip stitch underneath that chain three space. Okay, now I want to make the cuff match this pattern, but not because it's like an uh, imitation. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then slip stitch in between the three that I've already done. And then it's one, two, three, slip stitch in between. And as you can see, I'm making the chain three so that the next row I can build up again. So that's one, two, three. So hopefully, one, two, three. Three, you've got the gist of what we're going well, what's going to happen here and I don't really need to tell you and show you everything that's going off on this one but I will go all the way around just to show you one two three what it looks like and then I'll show you how to put the thumb on okay um I have actually <clears throat> excuse me one two three I've um typed out the pattern for this I have done it in English terms and I've done it in American terms, so US terms, two, three, and we'd slip stitch into this space here, there, the other side of this um, chain three, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a chain one and slip stitch into this side of it and then one two three okay so just so that I've got and it just makes it nice a nice neat um, join as you're going along and then you work the three double crochet or the three triple crochet one two three yeah and just keep working those on the top so where's my one that I've already made here's one I made earlier okay so what you do you do that while that's inside out and then you turn it the right way out or inside out so there's no um, tail ends on this one I didn't sew the end up look but what you do so this now looks like it's inside out obviously when you fold over the cuff it makes it be the right way out okay so then you end up with where's the thumb hole you end up with a mitten let's put this one on like that I love this one I love the color of this one um, and we've got obviously no thumb okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to just pull that one out of there, go back to my blue yarn. So when you've turned it the right way out, or turned it inside out again, <laughs> whichever way around you want to call it, this is when we attach the thumb on. And so you can see the join um, that you've done. If you can look at it, you'll, you'll have like this join there. Okay, I want to go all the way into the thumb hole. Where's the tail end bit? There, and then just slip stitch that through. And we're going to make a chain of three. So that's one, two, three. And like I was showing you on the cuff, because it was easier to show you on the cuff because you've got different colors, we've got these chains of three. So we're going to work three um, treble crochet or three double crochet into these chain three stitches. So that's one, two, and three and then we're going to work into the oops tail ends there into the next one where we've got the chain three area 
And so this is a little bit more fiddly, but um, even if you are a beginner, because I have put it down that it is a beginner's pattern, because if you can work the um, <clears throat> the double crochet or the treble crochet stitch, then you'll be able to do this. Now, when we get to this bit here where we've got the join on the opposite side, this is where we want to just do one double crochet or a triple crochet, depending which country you're in. One stitch into that join there. Can you see that? I hope I've done that right. So you can see everything. And then under the chain three again. So that's one, two, and three. Whoops, Daisy. And then we're going to get into the next chain three space, which is just there. Lift that up for me. One, and you just need to get my tension right. I've gone, I can feel it stuck. Um, I keep having hot flushes as well, you know, um, I'm menopausal <laughs> and I keep having hot flushes and it's really, really not good um, having a hot flush um, with all the things that's going off right now. So I've got my chain three that I did in the beginning. I'm going to slip stitch to there. And also they contribute towards making squeaky yarn, which is not good. So as you can see, we've already got this little tube coming out, okay? And so we're going to do the chain three on top. So it's one, two, three. And we're going to just do this because we're going to, so we can build up. So in total, we need to have four blocks for the thumb. Let me get the one that I've already done, because that's it. You know how to do it now. By the way, yes, I know. Four millimeter crochet hook or a G a US G six, yeah. Four millimeter, four millimeter, four millimeter hook. <laughs> How many times I get asked that question? What size hooks you use? I use a four millimeter hook most of the time. I'm putting this one back on just to show you that you can see the four blocks. One, two, three, four. And what you do is when you get to the end. You don't do, you know how we've been doing the chain three to build up, we finish without the chain three. So we finish on just a, on a block row and then join it up the same way as you did the end. So it's just slip stitching together. And I thought I'd show you what it looks like as a fingerless mitt, okay? <laughs> um, because on this one, I've done the chain three on the end. Because when it's like that, it just doesn't look the best. I've got some little flowers on it. But when you put them on, it's like the, it changes things so much because they're so pretty yeah and so these ones if you wanted to just to make a fingerless one with, with a little thumb on it you need to make um, a square which is 10 blocks by 10 blocks then you only put two on the thumb okay um, so there we go so that's I've showed you how to make um, some little mittens and say that I've actually I've done out that done the pattern so what I've done is, let's see if I can bring it underneath, I've printed it off, the pictures are not the best I have to say because I was actually crocheting pieces while I was commuting on the way to work and I didn't get home till late at night so I was having to use, um, take photos while we've got um, just the house light on and the house light, even though that they're those economy bulbs, they always make, because these are, because this is these, this is that picture is these white gloves that they look yellowy yeah and there it looks really really yellowy and there's the other picture just so that i can show you because obviously i was trying my best so this one here that's the green which is this green there but <laughs> on the and that was a nice light day picture but that there is exactly the same mitt because it's got the yellow on it but it came out more bluey colored because of the way that the light was, because maybe the way, I don't know, whether it was my printer, whatever. But just thought to let you know anyway. And also, I forgot to type in the page numbers. So if you print it off, you've got to write the numbers on yourself, okay? So I didn't do the best job in one sense, but... Um, let me put that back into order there. Um, but, so you've... Woo! Nearly knocked all my paperwork on the floor. So there you go. Right, I've got... Um, yeah, so the pattern's going to be available in my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is called Cottage Cake. And the reason why it's called Cottage Cake is because I made the Etsy that long ago. I was actually into cake making at the time and I was doing all my cake modelling and things like that. 
and then obviously I changed my business and um, I did I was doing my crochet videos and then decided to try and use my Etsy um, to actually put my patterns up for sale and when I tried to change the name of my Etsy channel Etsy shop it made it so that people lost it because I kept, I'd said in some of my other videos that it was called Cottage Cake so my Etsy is called Cottage Cake um, my video channel is called Karen's channel because it's all about me <laughs> no, it's not all about me it's obviously it's things that I do and I like to do um, and um, so hi guys everybody that's at work that's actually working from home oh that's just reminded me as I've waved my hand take measure because the, I've obviously made this to fit me okay so I'm going to show you how to measure your hand so if you put your tape measure there put your thumb and hold it you wrap your tape measure around and you get to there right so um that's really really loosely around so it looks like it's like eight inches <laughs> okay but if you pulled it tight um it's actually only seven and a half to be fair is the actual size because you have to measure it sort of there that's where you measure for a measure of glove so if you saw a glove and it's size it says it's a size seven and a half it will fit Okay, so if you want to make these bigger, obviously you need to make more blocks. You can use bigger hooks, small hooks, bigger yarn. The yarn I've used, this yarn is lovely. It's quite, um, let's get my thing here. This is the yarn from um, Aldi. Yeah, the So Crafty range. And where's their little thing? Um, it's colour number is K620. And it tells you as well on it that it's 100% acrylic yarn. I don't know if it tells you to use what size hook. No, this one doesn't tell you what size hook to use on it. But um, obviously I've used 4mm crochet hook. So, oh, I've seen it. I've gone on to 32 minutes. Okay, so um, I think I've given you everything that I need to give you all the information. So thank you for watching. Oh, I know what I forgot. On my other videos, when I was, because I actually did these videos to say why I hadn't been doing videos for so long, um, which I've explained is because I went and did a, a proper job, as my dad calls it. Um, um, oh, I've just randomly forgot what I was going to say now. That's gone poof out of my head. Uh, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. I really I've lost it I've lost the plot <laughs> I'm saying I'm not used to making the videos I haven't done one for a while so um I just want to oh, that was it I remembered it was to say thank you I actually was the, for the eight I actually each time I reached a milestone so while I was actually working in the office I actually reached the milestone of getting to 80,000 subscribers and I was so so proud I was so happy and I wanted to do videos at the time but I was too busy training doing the job that I have that I've learned to do which was really hard to learn actually um and so I didn't do any videos then I made it to 85,000 and now um I'm not sure if I've made it to 86,000 as we speak right now but I just want to say thank you thank you so much that you still kept on subscribing you still kept on coming and watching my videos and um joining in and listening to me waffle on about silly little things sometimes but sometimes People do, you know, we do, we all have our moments where we waffle on about silly stuff, probably like I'm doing right now. Um, but um, but the thing was, is that yesterday, when I went to a look at my channel, I could only see the old version of it. And I haven't seen that for so, so long because I loved the old version of the way I looked at YouTube. Because I would be able to see my comments so easily and I could get to them to be able to put little hearts on. Now they've changed things, it's like my brain it gets all scrambled with a menopausal thing so it's not the best situation to be in um but i noticed that i've got over 12 million total views over 12 million it's like what so i just want to say a massive big thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so thank you for watching thank you for liking thank you for sharing thank you for subscribing thank you for your lovely comments i do read them i just really haven't had time to be able to do two jobs at the same time i'm I'm not as clever or as able to multitask as some people, okay? So, there we have it. I've made it to 35 minutes. <laughs> well, nearly. Okay, so thank you for watching, guys. 4mm hook, remember, 4mm hook. G6 in the US. Double knit yarn.
okay thanks guys bye for now